So let's go ahead and let's look at the balancing of redox reactions. Um, so remember that when we're balancing redox reactions, we're not only balancing the number of each atom type, we're also considering um, the balancing of the number of electrons that have been transferred between your oxidizing agent and reducing agent. Um, so let's say you're given an example, like the oxidation of iron plus three uh, to, sorry, plus two to plus three uh, by dichromate in an acidic solution. Um, we'll talk about what we mean in terms of identifying if it's acidic or basic um, and how that changes your procedure um, as you go um, through this process. But if we're given this overall equation, what we're first going to do is we're going to write two half reactions. Um, and basically, just like we saw um, in the process of writing half reactions um, in, in another video that I've posted, um, you're going to look at which substance is being oxidized and which substance is being reduced. Um, so if we just take a quick look, um, iron plus 2 to iron plus 3, we know that an oxidation has occurred there. Um, and although it's not quite as clear, um, going from the dichromate to chromium plus 3 is going to be a reduction step. So the oxidation step is, is very clear. We're going from plus 2 to plus 3. Um, that's easy to see. So that's our oxidation half reaction. Um, our reduction half reaction, we're going to obviously have to uh, assign an oxidation number uh, to the chromium that's in this molecule. Uh, so basic steps that we've seen before. Plus 6 is going to be the oxidation number associated with the chromium here. Plus 3 is the oxidation number associated with the chromium on the product side. So we have decreased our oxidation number, so a reduction has occurred here. Um, notice that I'm skipping over the addition of any electrons. Um, that will be taken care of later on in the balancing redox process. So if we go ahead and we look at step number two, we're going to balance the atoms that are um, not oxygen or hydrogen in each half reaction. Notice that in the oxidation half reaction, the number of ions, ions of iron um, are equal on both left and right hand side, so those the number total number of atoms present of that type are equal, so there's no need to do any balancing with that. However, in the reduction step, we obviously have um, a need to balance our number of chromiums. We have two chromiums on the left side and only one on the right. So, in order to balance that, just like we would with any normal uh, equation, we put a coefficient of 2 in front of the chromium plus 3 ion. That gives us two chromiums and two chromiums on both sides of the arrow. So we subsequently balanced uh, the number of chromium atoms. Now, in order to balance our oxygen and hydrogen um, atoms, uh, we need to utilize H2O in order to balance our oxygen atoms, and we're going to use H plus in order to balance our H atoms. We obviously don't need to do this step uh, for the oxidation step because the oxidation step doesn't have any oxygen or hydrogen. However, the reduction process does have um, oxygen uh, that one must consider. So um, notice we have seven oxygens on uh, the left-hand side of this arrow. So in order to balance my number of oxygens, I'm going to add seven H2O molecules, right? Because those seven oxygens are going to balance the seven oxygens um, on my reactant side. Now, in order to balance the hydrogens that I've added, I must add H+. Now, so I have 14 H plus, or excuse me, 14 H's on the right-hand side, on the product side. Um, so I'm going to add 14 H pluses on the left-hand side in order to balance the total number of hydrogens. So with this step, I balanced my hydrogen and my oxygen, um, and then I could proceed to the next. So this brings us to our next step. Okay, now remember, balancing redox reactions, we're not just considering uh, basically that mass conservation. We're not considering just our number of atom types on each side of the arrow. We are also looking at the number of electrons. Those have to be balanced. So the first thing we're going to do is simply make the half reactions have the appropriate number of electrons on each side. So remember, this was my oxidation step, this was my reduction step. So your electron should be added to the appropriate side of each arrow. So if we go ahead and we look at this, um, notice that we've gone from a plus 2 ion to a plus 3 ion. So what that means is that this Fe plus 2 ion has lost an electron. So in terms of your products, you're going to have a iron plus 3 ion that is produced and one electron that has been lost. Um, in that same thought process, the reduction process is gaining electrons. Remember, this 
chromium had an oxidation number of plus 6, right? So um, the product that you obtained was a plus 3 chromium ion. So each chromium ion here has to be reduced by 3 electrons. So a total of 6 electrons are going to be needed in order to reduce the 2 chromium ions with an oxidation number of plus 6 to an oxidation number of plus 3. So, six electrons is what was needed to be picked up by this dichromate to give me uh, my chromium plus three ion. So this now brings us to our next step, which is the fact that we've identified the number of electrons that are basically being given up and accepted by our oxidation and reduction step. However, the number of electrons that are transferred must be equal. The oxidation and reduction processes are occurring in tandem. So the product that's, or the reactants that, that's producing the electrons um, must do so in a way that's sufficient enough to reduce down the other reactant. So um, if we go ahead and we look at the number of electrons that we have here, we have one electron being produced or being released from the iron plus two, okay? And we have six that we need in order to reduce down um, the uh, chromate, <coughs> excuse me, ions. So, in order for the number of electrons to make sense, we must multiply in order to get the number of electrons to be the same. So, what are we going to do? Well, we're not going to change the, the number of electrons here in our reduction step, but instead we're going to multiply everything through by a coefficient of 6 in order to get the six electrons we need. So six uh, Fe plus two, six Fe plus three, and six electrons is what we're gonna need. So these are the number of Fe two plus ions equivalents that we're going to need in order to produce the number of electrons necessary to reduce down the dichromate uh, chromium. So once we've equalized the number of electrons, um, what we need to do is we're going to add the two half reactions together um, and basically uh, check and, and, and account for all of the species present. Now, if there are multiple species that show up on both sides, we're of course going to cancel those out. So, what are we going to do here, okay? Well, um, first things first is you can approach this from uh, different ways. If you want to sum everything together and then do your canceling, that's fine. You can also do your canceling in this step and then write out whatever's left over, kind of like a, a net ionic equation establishing uh, process that we've done before. Uh, either way works. Um, whatever works for you, you can choose. So what I'm going to do, though, is I'm just going to cancel out everything that shows up on both sides. So six electrons, six electrons, that's what shows up on both sides. Uh, iron plus two only shows up on the left-hand side. Uh, hydrogen, or excuse me, um, H plus ion, dichromate, those only show up on the left-hand side. So those are going to get written down as follows. So 6Fe2 plus plus 14H plus plus my dichromate. Then I write down what shows up on the right-hand side of the arrow. So 6Fe3 plus plus 2Cr3 plus plus 7H2O. Okay, so once I've summed uh, the species and canceled anything that uh, repeats, I now have an equation um, of the overall reduction um, and oxidation processes in one uh, single equation. And as you could tell, this looks very different from the original um, uh, equation that we were given at the start. So besides checking for the number of atoms present on both sides, um, you also need to check for your charges um, to be balanced in step number one. So uh, let's first check our number of atoms. So uh, iron, there's six of them, six of them. Hydrogen, 14, hydrogen, 14. Oxygen, seven, oxygen, seven. Um, <clears throat> chromium, two, chromium, two. Okay, so all of my atoms are balanced, but now I must make sure that the charges are balanced. So if we go ahead and look at this, I have 14 H plus ions, okay? So 14 times the charge, so 14 times plus 1, okay? 
minus 2, I only have one dichromate ion, so I'm going to subtract out those that negative 2 charge. And then I'm going to also add my uh, 6 Fe2 plus ions, so 6 times 2 is 12. So you sum all this together, and that will give you an overall charge um, of 24. If we look at the right-hand side, we have 6 times my Fe plus 3, which is 6 times 3, plus 2 times 3, which is 6. Okay, so that's going to give me a total charge of 24 on this side. Notice there's no charge on the H2O molecule because it's neutral, so it doesn't show up in my charge determination uh, balancing. So basically, you, you write these out, you check, um, and obviously check both your number of atoms and the charges and make sure everything is balanced. Um, and subsequently, this is how you would balance <clears throat> a redox reaction that's occurring in acidic media. Now, something that has to be considered is that step number eight is necessary when your reaction is being carried out in basic solution. So that'll be something that's actually um, indicated in your problems. Um, so in order to facilitate actually um, balancing, balancing the reactions that are in basic solution, um, you're going to follow the step number um, eight. So step number eight here um, tells you that what you're going to do is you're going to add hydroxide ions to both sides of the equation for every H plus that is at present. So with this is an example here that you see right here, um, what I would end up doing is I would end up adding hydroxides to both sides of the equation. So if we look at this example here, um, we see that we have 14 H plus ions. And if we were to carry this out in basic media, that would mean that I need to add 14 OH minuses to both sides. So I'm going to add 14 hydroxide ions on this left-hand side. And I'm going to do the same thing on the right-hand side. So I've added hydroxides to both sides. Now, when you combine hydroxide and H+, that gives you H2O. So this will actually give us a new equation. So I'm going to have 14 H2O molecules, right, plus 6 Fe2 plus ions, okay, plus Cr2O7 2 minus, so my dichromates, um, 6 Fe3 plus, 2 chromium plus 3 ions, plus 7 H2O, plus 14 OH minuses. Okay, so this is our new equation. Now, we're going to um, basically cancel out anything that can be canceled. Um, so if we go ahead and we take a look at this, um, notice that the H2O on the left and the H2O on the right, those can be um, actually reduced down. Okay, so um, uh, if we look at this, this H2O and 7H2O molecules on the right-hand side are going to cancel out with 7 on the left-hand side. So 7H2O is going to be what you're left over with. Okay, so if we bring these um, down here, we're going to have 7H2O um, plus 6 plus our dichromate. And then our 14. So if we go ahead and um, look at this equation and we check the number of um, both charges and ions, we'll see that we have a balanced equation. So uh, let's see. We have 7 times 2 hyd hydrogen, so that's 14 hydrogens. Uh, 14 hydrogens on this side. Um, I have 14 oxygens on the right-hand side. I have 7 oxygens here and 7 oxygen here for a total of 7, um, excuse me, 14 oxygens total. Um, obviously, my irons are balanced. Um, my chromiums are balanced. So this is how the balanced equation would look for um, this reaction if it was carried out in basic media. So these are the basics of balancing redox reactions. Um, you follow the first seven steps um, for a reaction that's being carried out in acidic media, and you add step number eight and revisit step number seven um, if you are carrying out this reaction in basic solutions. And as I said, that would be indicated um, before you start your balancing procedures. Um, and following these steps will lead to 
um, successful redox balancing.